Listen, uh, Emma's not with us this fine Tuesday, but Professor Kevin Curran uh, is by way of our digital sort of weekly update. Kevin, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Mark. Listen, Kevin, I want to talk firstly about uh, Snapchat. Uh, yeah. I, I Look, I've never used Snapchat, but I know Wayne's, it sort of snaps up, snaps down. But a lot of times parents and guardians and grandparents can be a wee bit anxious about what happens on there. Now, what, 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 tell us what we need to know about these new parental controls. Yeah, Snapchat is rolling out these parental controls that allows parents to see their teenagers' contacts and also report to social media companies. So they can see who, the, who their children have messaged, but they can't see the messages, but they can see who their contacts are and they can see who they last contacted and when, you know, how many days ago it was really. So it's, it's, it's kind of a level of some control over who, who they're communicating with, but you can't, the parents can't actually see the messages, which is, it would never work otherwise, you know. So yeah, it's this thing about kids having freedom and, and kids, know, and their parents knowing what they're up to and who they're up to it uh, with. I suppose that there's always going to be blurred lines there, Kevin. You're, you're a father yourself, of course. There is, a, but a, 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 and also in real terms too. So, you, so do you expect parents really? How many parents will have twenty minutes a day to go into Snapchat and see all of you know the conversations, or and then go to TikTok and then go to Instagram? You know, really. So it's 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 it's, it's hard to see how many people will use it. Maybe check in every so often, really. But yeah. generally, kids themselves are quite. And if you're safe in the real world, you're safe online usually. But again, it's it's a nice option again to give some people. You know, but again, you're supposed to be thirteen and above, obviously, to use Snapchat. So not many, you know, teenagers. Well, you know, not that many teenagers and very really welcome this. Snap uh, have said the direction of platform policy for Snap Make Snapchat says it will allow parents to see who is in their teen's universe. I suppose, Kevin, if something toxic is going on for days and days or for post after post after post, at least that becomes apparent without having, as you say, without having to go in and read everything. Well, see, does it? Because the bully, that, that person at the top of the list, Linda or, you know, Tommy, you know, and you see your kids talking to them, you know, every so often, but you have no idea what they said. Right. So they could be bullying your, your kid, really. All you know is that they're in contact with Linda or Tommy or whatever. So, <laughs> so listen, complicated stuff. Kevin, I want to talk with Janet Jackson. What's this? <laughs> uh, did this, is it, this didn't just recently happen. This happened back in the day, did it? The, the, her track, it, uh, Rhythm Nation. It did. It's just that it came out this week. One of the top technology guys in Microsoft revealed that... Um, that one of his Windows XP team. So again, that's that's a version of Windows from a long time ago. So a laptop a laptop manufacturer was running Windows XP, and they found that every time Janet Jackson's uh, Rhythm Nation song was played, that the, that the hard drives crashed. And then they would look further into it. You know, who knows how they found this out? But they looked into it and they found out that that Rhythm Nation has their resonant <laughs> frequency of five thousand four hundred revs per minute, which is how fast these you know hard disks, the standard ones, used to spin at, and it just caused it to crash. So they had to add in this kind of filter in the audio pipeline to detect and remove any frequencies from a song like Rhythm Nation. This is way before Shazam, is Shazam yeah. Nation? But they basically the, the natural resonant frequencies of the one song. It sort exactly. of wrecked the, wrecked the computer. That's mad. It is. is it, yeah. There's a one famous one for years where a guy at the data center starts shouting at hard drives and mm-hmm. they all spike and start to um, miss because of, the, you know, the vibrations caused by the, vo- the sound waves that they're so sensitive hard drives, actually. Well, they are. Kevin, just before I let you go, a final word about Google uh, and rights and all. I mean, I'm taking images of our bodies for medical professionals. I, lots of people do this, Kevin, and a lot of people argue it speeds medicine up. Your doctor can see you in two minutes at home and all, and all of the rest. But this was a father who took images of of, of the son's private area for medical yeah. purposes. Exactly. Yeah. He he was sending um the groin area pictures um because um so a doctor could tell you know whatever was wrong there. But see, Apple have rolled back in this. But Google, for instance, um they have filters. They have known images of child sexual you know abuse material, right? And then they run through filters, and it came up that obviously you know not even filter. They use image recognition to see are we looking at someone's private or someone naked, and then they flag it. But in this case, they um they seen that it was just you know a young boy. It was a groin area. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they immediately just banned the, the person's Gmail account, to lock them out of all the services, and he had no, re- he had no way to come back to it, even though humans are supposed to be in the last part of it again. So it's an example of where l- people legitimately can be taking photos of, of their, you know, of naked parts of the body, really, yeah. and for legitimate purposes, but they can be flagged as actually being, you know, pornographic. And Computer says no. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Kevin, thanks for that. Professor Kevin Curran, uh, our technology slot this uh, Tuesday. A lovely note.